Hello, everyone. My name is Aliya Udirbaeva, and I'm glad to welcome you on our webinar, Current Restrictions on Entry and the Exit of Foreigners During Their Stay in Kazakhstan. Before we proceed, uh, let's check our sound. Please um, type one in the chat window. If you can hear me well, you can, you can see me okay. So let me just have a look. Yes. One second. Okay. Everything seems to be okay. So um, this time we've decided to hold the wrap up webinar in English so that all expatriates who would like to attend could join the uh, uh, discussion. And if you remember, we had uh, several meetings with the state of state authorities such as migration services, such as uh, border control, labor department. And uh, now we will be reviewing most important issues that we have discussed earlier. And uh, we would also like to share our experience in resolving cases uh, from our everyday practice. So today I have my colleague uh, Anwar Munbaev with me. Anwar will make a presentation on current um, rules of border crossing and stay of foreigners in Kazakhstan. Anwar? Hello, uh, everyone. Hope you hear me well. Uh, thank you for joining us for today webinar. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity for us to share our experience and latest uh, updates and uh, insights about the restrictions on entry and exit of foreigners in Kazakhstan. So we have prepared a brief uh, presentation which includes uh, most sensitive topics for the foreign employees working uh, and stay in Kazakhstan. And I would like to start my presentation uh, with uh, the brief information about our company. Let me uh, start the presentation first. One second. So um, our company has been uh, providing immigration services for over 15 years. We specialize in consulting and supporting foreign investors and embassies uh, on the issues of mobilization and employment of foreign personnel in Kazakhstan. Being represented in four uh, main regions, we support, we provide support and expertise all over Kazakhstan. So uh, today's agenda for, of our presentation includes uh, most uh, common and interesting topics such as uh, procedure for border crossing, what uh, is the current uh, situation uh, for, for this procedure, uh, who is allowed to enter Kazakhstan during the existing quarantine measures mm -hmm. and restrictions. Uh, second, entry permission from the inter departmental committee it's uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, the yes yes important uh, uh, issue and topic how to get this permission what you need to uh, consider while applying for this uh, entry permission and what is the processing time what is processing time for getting and uh, approving this entry permission from the IDC? Let's uh, let's uh, let's call it IDC because uh, inter interdepartmental committee is too difficult to pronounce every time during the webinar session. So we will also talk about this uh, about the suspension of visa free uh, regime. Uh, currently, as you know, uh, there is some restrictions on it. Also, what you need to uh, to be aware of uh, the provision of PCR certificate while passing border control. Uh, some insights about the departure from Kazakhstan, and the last topic is uh, the Q and A session, which includes uh, the questions and issues we received while attendees registered for the webinar. Uh, at the end of our session, we will uh, review uh, most frequently. Uh, asked questions, uh, most sensitive questions. So we will uh, try to answer to uh, the questions of entities. Uh, and also, uh, if we have enough time, we will also uh, uh, review the questions uh, from the live chat as well. So I 
I suggest to start uh, the presentation from the first uh, procedure for border crossing. As you know, there is a list of individuals who can enter Kazakhstan during the existing quarantine restrictions. Uh, we have prepared uh, the list uh, of the most common uh, uh, cases when the foreign employees and the foreign citizens can enter Kazakhstan during the uh, existing restrictions. First of all, uh, the citizens of countries, Kazakhstan res resumed direct flights with. There is 12 uh, countries uh, and citizens of those 12 countries can enter Kazakhstan without any restrictions. So we will talk about later on the next slides. Second, uh, foreigners uh, having uh, obtained uh, the entry permission of the IDC so uh, just a quick remark, this uh, entry permission cannot be obtained by individuals, I mean by foreign employees themselves. So only host entities or inviting parties, it doesn't matter how to pronounce it, uh, can apply for such kind of entry permission. So we, we have prepared a step-by-step -step procedure, description of this process, how to apply for the entry permission and what are the most uh, important issues of this procedure. Uh, residence permit holders and their family members, they're also allowed to enter Kazakhstan during uh, current time, but there's some uh, restrictions for them on the, term, uh, on the time and term on entry and exit uh, from Kazakhstan. So we will uh, talk about this one and 90 days as uh, the foreign place says rule. And also foreigners who are the family members of the Kazakhstan citizens. This is uh, another category of people uh, who are allowed to enter Kazakhstan uh, currently. So uh, uh, this is not the full list of the individuals. So uh, as uh, uh, you might be aware, uh, the full list is available on the official website of the Border uh, Service, National Security Committee. So uh, they... Um, the, the last update uh, was dated on November 14th, so you may follow uh, the QR code to see the uh, latest update, uh, updated version of the list uh, in English. So let me uh, continue. As I said before, uh, Kazakhstan has already uh, resumed uh, direct regular flights with 12 countries. Uh, currently, uh, the list of countries is, is right now. So uh, it's not like only European countries available in this list, but also some CIS countries. So uh, it means that citizens of these countries uh, has, uh, have uh, right to enter Kazakhstan without any limits. First of all, they can enter Kazakhstan by direct or transit air flights uh, without getting any entry permission of, of the Interdepartment Committee. Uh, just one quick remark. Uh, if you travel uh, by air, so no need to apply for entry permission. But if you travel to Kazakhstan, let's say from Russia by uh, land, by, uh, by transport, by vehicle, so uh, the host entity will be required to apply for you uh, such kind of permission in order you could enter and cross the border uh, by, by vehicle. So it doesn't matter whether you are traveling, um, let's say for work or business or private purposes, there's no any restrictions. So uh, people traveling from those uh, countries, uh, citizens of those countries uh, may stay here for, uh, for private or for business purposes as well. The term of their stay depends on the uh, validity of visa, uh, for example, of residence permit, of temporary residence permit, uh, which is called RVP, RVP as well. And also it depends on visa-free stay. Let's say if uh, Russian citizens travel to Kazakhstan for business purposes uh, by air, so uh, there's no any work permit and any work visa for them. So we need to be aware of the duration period. Uh, they can stay for business purposes only 90 days in 180 day period. So uh, some of those 
uh, uh, some citizens of those countries uh, may travel to Kazakhstan without any visa if there is a bilateral agreement on visa-free travel between the countries. For example, Ukraine citizens may travel to Kazakhstan without any visa uh, for, for, let's say, for business or private purposes if work uh, or, let's say, employment uh, issues in Kazakhstan, then uh, a host entity uh, should apply for work permit and also for work visa. And uh, one uh, last remark uh, is uh, that there is no any limit on one 90 days rule for uh, these citizens. So uh, even let's say uh, a German citizen hol holder of uh, residence permit can travel to Kazakhstan by air and there is no any need to follow the one and 90 days rule for him and family members as well. Yes, and Anwar, I also would like to yes uh, to add here uh, important thing just to finalize that all these limitations works only all these limitations work only in case if you travel by air transport. So it doesn't work if you travel by land. So all these limitation uh, limitations um, uh, will work only in case if you travel by air transport. Just to uh, mm -hmm. summarize the. Uh, this topic because there are a lot of questions about this and uh, some of, um, for example, Russian citizens try to mm -hmm. um, cross the border by land because we have several uh, points, crossing points, and uh, it is important to, uh, once again to note that it works only for uh, air transport. In case if you need uh, to travel by um, vehicle of course you can but in this case you will require additionally to get a special permission from idc mm -hmm. yes just keep in mind if uh, you decide to travel uh, let's say to uzbekistan or to uh, kyrgyzstan or to russia by land so the host entity uh, uh, should apply for such permits and uh, also, it is important to highlight that uh, the entry permission issued by the IDC cannot be issued for the uh, private or tourist purposes. So it's only for work and business. We will talk and speak about uh, this procedure later on. So uh, in order to follow uh, the uh, latest updates uh, on the resuming of the international flights with different countries we have prepared the link for of the official web source of the civil aviation committee so there were some last updates on the countries added uh, in this list so you may follow this qr code to um, get updates on further resuming of um, numbers of countries uh, and just to be updated uh, about the list of those countries as well. Uh, one, yes. yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Um, the reason why, why we decided to show it in the presentation because there are a lot of um, uh, information on social networks, news uh, about these countries, uh, and we received a lot of questions how, um, where to find the official one. So uh, this list currently uh, stated here is uh, official information provided by uh, civil aviation and it is currently available and was uh, published just recently on 7th, 7th of uh, December mm -hmm. as far as I remember. So it is uh, very up-to-date information about these uh, 12 countries. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, also, um, uh, we recommend uh, 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 following the official uh, the official websites of the National Security uh, Committee Border Service, as well as uh, the official web source uh, of the uh, Committee for Migration of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, to stay updated about the uh, latest uh, uh, changes and uh, additions uh, to the current procedure for border crossing. Uh, uh, you may agree uh, with that, that uh, those changes uh, are being adopted uh, on the regular basis. So it's really important to, uh, to stay up to date uh, to all this information. Uh, one of the sensitive questions we, we receive during our recent practice uh, uh, is uh, the uh, 
entry uh, procedure for entry, exit, and stay of the residence permit holders, uh, uh, like simply said, pin card holders. So uh, there are some restrictions uh, effective November 14, 2020. Uh, it's not like maybe not restrictions, but uh, some updates. So if you are a residence permit holder, it's uh, really important to add that uh, you should be a residence permit holder uh, in Kazakhstan, not like in any other country. If you are, let's say, a UK citizen, but having, let's say, a residence permit in other region, uh, in, in other country, not in Kazakhstan. So this restriction does not apply to you if you hold, let's say, work visa. So you may enter to Kazakhstan uh, uh, for the duration of this visa. This only applies if a person uh, uh, has uh, a residence permit to Kazakhstan. So uh, the one, one and 90 days rule applies to uh, residence permit holders and their family members, and also foreigners who are family members of the Kazakhstan citizens. But this uh, um, rule does not apply uh, if uh, you are one of the citizens of the countries uh, with which Kazakhstan has resumed direct regular flights. Also, if you have uh, work visa holders, usually there is some misunderstanding between the residence permit holders and work visa holders. And just uh, important to clarify that if you have work, work visa, uh, let's say C3 category, it doesn't matter whether you have let's say work permit or not so uh, there is no any limits in uh, your uh, numbers of entries and exit except you don't have uh, a multiple entry permission issued by the interdepartmental committee so once you receive work visa and once the company uh, which invites you to uh, in kazakhstan uh, has already received a multiple entry permission, so no limits in numbers of ent entries and exits uh, in and from Kazakhstan. So uh, if, uh, let's say, a company uh, applies for the single entry permission issued by the IDC committee, so uh, it means that you will uh, be allowed to enter Kazakhstan only one time. So please uh, check with your employer with your uh, inviting company, whether the company applied for a multiple entry permission. If not, so uh, you have enough time to do it after uh, Christmas holidays in order to return back to Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. I think we, here we can also add about, um, there are a lot of questions uh, about crossing the border if this limitation works only for exit entry or also for uh, entry exit for example it is uh, we understand that uh, this limitation works uh, for uh, when foreigner leaves Kazakhstan and will be able to enter again to Kazakhstan uh, after 90 days but there are also questions about foreigners who uh, arrives back to Kazakhstan and uh, the questions the question is if uh, this person if this foreign foreigner uh, can leave without waiting these uh, 90 days so 90 days. we just need to yes um, note here that it doesn't um, uh, work for your staying uh, in Kazakhstan so you can leave uh, once you arrive to Kazakhstan you can leave even after five day or five days or ten days it doesn't matter but as soon as you leave Kazakhstan, then this 90 days limitation system will start uh, working. Will apply, yes. yes. And also, if uh, you are working on the shift basis, let's say 28 days and 20 days, 28 days in Kazakhstan and 20 days out uh, outside Kazakhstan, so uh, there is still uh, some limits uh, applied to you. But uh, if you uh, receive a multiple entry uh, permit from the IDC, so no problems with further entering and exiting. Uh, departing from Kazakhstan. So we need to check whether you have, your, your company has such kind of uh, multiple entry. If not, so uh, you need to change your current mm -hmm. uh, permission, yes, from, uh, let's say, single entry to multiple entry. Yes, so it would be our recommendations um, just to uh, make sure that you have this IDC uh, before you leave the country, so so you will just uh, secure you from such uh, limitations. 
uh, if you are planning, if you're a resident permit holder and you need to arrive back to Kazakhstan uh, before these 90 days, uh, it is our recommendation to get this uh, IDC uh, permission mm -hmm. before you leave the country because, as you understand, this will go through this committee decision and in case if um, the company, the inviting uh, host party will not succeed with this permission, of course, you will not be able to um, use these exceptions for IDC uh, permission. Mm -hmm. That's why it is important to get these permissions before you leave the country. Mm -hmm. And the last uh, clarification on this uh, is that there's still misunderstanding whether uh, um, there is some limits to uh, or restrictions to leave the country. First, uh, if uh, you are a residence permit holder and your family uh, members are accompanying you during your trip uh, to Kazakhstan, they can enter, let's say, on, uh, on let's let's imagine, on January 1st, you are entering Kazakhstan, and at in that time, uh, you can you are allowed to stay in Kazakhstan till the duration of your uh, residence permit card. It means that till the expiry date, you may stay in Kazakhstan. It doesn't it doesn't uh, mean that you need to to leave the country after 90 days. Mm -hmm. So once you entered. And you don't have any plans to return back to, let's say, your home country. I mean, uh, let's say to UK or to US, doesn't matter. So if you're staying in Kazakhstan, so you can stay till the expiry date of your uh, residence permit. But if you work on the shift basis or you say you travel a lot outside Kazakhstan to visit some different uh, countries like CIS countries as well. So you need to be aware of, about the multiple entry permission uh, for, for your family members, the same. If they're traveling uh, a lot with you, uh, accompanying you during your business trips, so uh, the host entity in Kazakhstan should apply for the same multiple entry permission. So that's why it is uh, one of the most sensitive questions about the uh, timing, duration, and staying uh, in uh, under resi uh, residence permit. So. Uh, also, there were some uh, uh, recent changes uh, in the uh, in the penalties and also in the administrative liability of the residence permit holders. Later on, we will discuss the administrative liability of other categories of foreigners staying under uh, work permits, staying under work visas in Kazakhstan. But uh, let's imagine if you were outside uh, Kazakhstan during this period of time, I mean, starting from March 3rd to uh, 1st of November, and still uh, you're outside of Kazakhstan, let's imagine. So uh, there is no any penalties for you and there will be no any cancellation of your residence permit. There was uh, the government resolution signed by the uh, prime minister, which uh, confirmed that uh, uh, the validity of the documents like residence permit or like work visa, so it was like the, uh, the immigration amnesty. We will talk about and speak about this later. So let's imagine if you have a residence permit and you were outside for 183 uh, days during that period, so no cancellation of residence permit. After this period, I mean, after 1st of November, still you're outside of country and uh, there is no any plans for you to return back to Kazakhstan, but Please keep in mind, uh, you have another 180 days outside of uh, Kazakhstan. And if you stay uh, abroad till uh, 2nd May, so still no penalties for you. And if you decide to return back to Kazakhstan after 2nd May, and, there is ex uh, and you will exceed this 180 days rule, so uh, this penalty will lead to cancellation of residence permit. It means that, uh, let's imagine, if you travel to Kazakhstan uh, on June 2020, and uh, no, since this year, and, and uh, since the beginning of this year, you are outside of Kazakhstan, and you decided to return back on June uh, next year. So uh, cancellation of residence permit uh, will apply to you as a penalty for the residence permit holders. It is really important to highlight that uh, you need to plan your trip 
to Kazakhstan if you uh, see your case in this uh, slide as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, an example for you. So uh, if you don't have any trips till uh, 2nd May 2020 and no plans for you to return back uh, even in the next year, next year, so uh, possibly uh, and probably uh, residence permit will be cancelled by the relevant uh, immigration authorities. So uh, let's continue. Uh, we are at the uh, stage of uh, uh, speaking about the uh, procedure for getting entry permission from the IDC committee. So uh, this is uh, the step-by-step -step procedure uh, approved by the government authorities. So uh, uh, right now, uh, entry permission uh, from the uh, IDC committee is issued for the uh, single uh, or multiple entry and exit to Kazakhstan. Uh, if you need to travel to Kazakhstan only for one, let's say, uh, trip. So we, we, the host entity in Kazakhstan may apply for single entry. If you need more uh, trips, uh, so you need to apply for multiple entries to Kazakhstan. Uh, as we said before, this uh, permission is issued on, only for work and business purposes. And also, uh, while we will consider uh, the step-by-step uh, -step procedure, uh, we should indicate first that uh, the uh, issuance of this entry permission depends on the type of project the company uh, works on. Uh, and the committee will see whether uh, you really need your trip to Kazakhstan or not. So we will speak about this later on. And uh, entry permission can be granted by the IDC committee also for family members. It doesn't matter uh, whether it's uh, work visa holders or um, let's say residence permit holders or even let's say Russian or uh, citizens or in any CIS country citizens. So the full uh, and complete step-by-step uh, -step procedure is available on our website. So please follow this QR code to download the algorithm, uh, but uh, only in Russian, because mainly uh, the host entities sh should follow those requirements to apply for entry permission. So let's uh, uh, talk about the step-by-step -step procedure. We prepared oh, the um, description of the six main stages of this process. And the first stage includes the preparation uh, and submission of the written request uh, about entry you know, of foreign specialists uh, to the projects in Kazakhstan. Uh, this uh, written request should be submitted uh, to Akimat or to the relevant ministry, depending on the region. We see the practice that uh, in some regions, uh, such kind of requests are being accepted by the Akimats uh, or let's say like in a, in a terrain, uh, in, in Astana, we have the practice when the company submits written requests for uh, entry permission uh, to the ministries directly. So there is no any restriction on that. And, uh, and even uh, some uh, requests can be submitted uh, online as well through the EGOF portal. The, the second stage, once the letter was uh, prepared and submitted uh, for the Akimat or the ministry consideration by the inviting party, so the Akimat or uh, the ministry will make a decision whether to forward this request uh, for further consideration and approval of IDC or not. At this stage, usually uh, the inviting company can add more information or can update the written request because uh, as practice shows, uh, you should include more detailed information about the projects, uh, maybe some specific information, uh, um, the numbers uh, and quantity of foreign employees, what they will do, like, like job description of those employees working in Kazakhstan, and also some uh, uh, maybe appropriate dates uh, and uh, cities of entry in Kazakhstan. So once you submit uh, this letter, and the letter was approved by Akimat of the ministry, then it was forwarded to uh, IDC committee. The IDC committee will decide 
uh, whether uh, to approve or to reject this application. Uh, in our practice, it usually takes approximately uh, two and uh, three or even four weeks, depending on the region, to uh, pass these three stages. In case of uh, approval, uh, uh, the IDC will give uh, further instructions to the uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Border Service of the National Security Committee in order to assist uh, with entry of the foreign specialists to Kazakhstan. Uh, so uh, this is the stage, a third stage, and once it is uh, completed, uh, the, the host entity, the inviting entity, should forward uh, the list of approved uh, foreign employees traveling to Kazakhstan to the consideration of border services, like an additional step. Uh, uh, of course, uh, once uh, the ADC uh, approves your application, uh, uh, IDC will forward this uh, approval list to the consideration of relevant state authorities, but also it is required for the host, for the host entity, it is required to submit uh, this list uh, to the border service specialist. Usually in practice, uh, the list can be submitted by WhatsApp or by any messenger. Uh, don't, uh, I'm not sure how it works in uh, in every region, but in our practice, Alia, please correct me if I'm wrong, we can forward the information via email and also via WhatsApp. Yes, Anwar, uh, one more thing to add about the submission of documents. According to uh, implemented algorithm, uh, it was stated, it was uh, confirmed and it is written in this algorithm that host entity uh, must apply application for permission by registration address the company. So if previously um, it, uh, the, it was, uh, it depend on uh, where the project. foreigner, mm -hmm. not ah, foreign. on the workplace uh -huh. of a foreigner, for example, if foreigner works in Atrau, but company is registered in Astana, mm -hmm. then this permission had to be submitted in uh, the, in Astana by place of residence or by place of registration, sorry. Reg of the company. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So now it is required to submit by place of residence. Sorry for confusing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's like not like the invitation letters. If the company is registered in one region and submit the application, let's say in, uh, in, uh, in Atarao, but having registered uh, re having registration in Almaty, so uh, they should submit the application in Atra or in Almaty? In, in Almaty by registration in, address. Uh -huh. So it, it was uh, stated in this algorithm that uh -huh. host entity must uh, submit this application by registration address of the company, mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. of a foreigner, not by his workplace, but it, according mm -hmm. to company's registration address. Yes, it's like the, the same for the invitation letters. Yes. Yeah. Yes, if we apply for the initial or work or business visa, so depending on the place of registration, legal registration of the company, the invitation letter should be submitted to the immigration police in that place. So uh, definitely, yes. Okay, uh, the, the, the fifth stage is uh, uh, about the entry and stay uh, in Kazakhstan, I mean, uh, for the foreign national. Uh, in order to enter Kazakhstan, uh, foreign national may need a visa. So uh, the uh, host entity uh, should prepare the visa invitation letter uh, in advance uh, in order to apply for a visa. Usually in practice, uh, the visa uh, can be issued uh, uh, at, the, at the Kazakh embassies in home countries or citizens of uh, permanent resident uh, uh, countries of permanent residents of the foreigners in place, foreign place. So we need to uh, be aware that if you apply for a visa, please make sure that the foreigner will uh, apply for a visa in his home country or uh, in the country of his residence permit. Let's say UK citizen having residence permit in uh, in Dubai. Uh, can apply for a visa at the, at the Kazakh embassy in uh, UIA. So uh, uh, if no visa needed, so no need to follow this uh, stage. 
uh, for uh, further entry and stay in Kazakhstan. And the uh, sixth stage uh, related to uh, further stay and arrival in Kazakhstan once visa is received. So uh, make sure that uh, all sanitary and quarantine measures are uh, in compliance with, uh, with the current requirements. So we need to check. Uh, and also uh, it is important uh, to keep in mind uh, about the PCR certificate uh, while traveling to Kazakhstan. Every person needs to apply for a negative COVID test uh, by providing PCR certificate. So we will have a discussion on this uh, procedure as well. So once all these uh, main stages are completed, so a foreigner may travel to Kazakhstan and stay here, depending on, um, on the numbers of entries needed. So we need to apply for single or multiple entries uh, uh, permission from IDC. So this information about the numbers of entries should be indicated uh, at the stage first. So while we are preparing a written uh, request. And also one uh, important note, uh, if you received a multiple entry permission from IDC, so this uh, multiple entry permission will be valid for the next year. The duration uh, of this uh, entry permission uh, depends on the type of visa or uh, let's say period of stay. If Russian citizens, so usually uh, we need to uh, pass the passport registration at the immigration police, like we need to obtain the temporary residence permit for work visas. Usually work visa is issued for one year period. And if the company uh, has already applied for entry for multiple entry permissions, so uh, the validity of this entry permission uh, depends on the terms of visa. If the visa expires, let's say on uh, June next year, so the entry permission will uh, expire on the same period. If you successfully uh, renew work visa, so then you need to uh, check whether you need to renew your entry permission as well by submitting the same uh, request to the Akimato relevant ministry. Uh, as you know, uh, Kazakhstan has suspended uh, visa-free region for, 70, 70, uh, for 57 countries. So the initial suspension uh, was till November 1st, and uh, recently it was uh, renewed till 1st, of, uh, 1st May 2020, which means that uh, citizens of these countries cannot travel to Kazakhstan and the visa-free region. Uh, in case uh, of uh, needs uh, to travel to Kazakhstan for business, uh, purposes or for tourism uh, for tourism purposes so visa will be required so the host entity should um, follow the immigration procedures to apply for the uh, visa invitation letter and then to uh, receive a visa at the Kazakh embassy in home countries of the foreign place so uh, currently uh, unfortunately there is no any information whether the term uh, this term will be extended till indefinite time or not. We hope that uh, after uh, 1st uh, May 2000, uh, 2021, uh, the foreigners uh, from these countries uh, will be allowed to travel to Kazakhstan um, under visa-free region. So um, the next slide is uh, the procedure for obtaining PCR certificate. Uh, every time the uh, Kazakhstan authorities update and change the requirements for uh, individuals and uh, for foreign citizens traveling to Kazakhstan. So there's still uh, there's some restriction even on boarding uh, air flights uh, to travel to Kazakhstan. So we need to uh, be aware of the following requirements. First of all, it doesn't matter whether you have or you or you have work visa, you have residence permit, or you are a citizen, let's say, of one of the CIS countries. Uh, you need to provide the PCR certificate with negative COVID results, uh, which 
should be valid for uh, no more than three days, 74 hours at the time of border crossing. This rule does not apply to children under five years old. So uh, newborn um, babies uh, are exempt from this requirement. And if, uh, uh, let's say, you obtain the certificate, but it was expired during your flight to Kazakhstan, so you will be deported from Kazakhstan uh, according to the internal procedures. There is no any, uh, there is no any uh, way. So we need to be aware uh, about the expiry and validity of these uh, certificates. We have prepared one uh, of the few examples when we had in our practice, we, we had cases when the uh, certificates for uh, COVID uh, negative results uh, were expired during the flight, so from, uh, from, link, from long distance flights. So we have prepared the brief uh, example uh, and our recommendations how to avoid uh, the um, expiry of certificates during the flight. Uh, let's imagine, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a foreign citizen uh, from Argentina planning his trip to Kazakhstan. So this is a long distance uh, flight, uh, and this flight may take more than, um, let's say, 70 hours. So uh, it is expected that the, the PCR certificate, which was issued, uh, let's say, in his home country in Argentina, may be expired during his flight to Kazakhstan. That's why uh, uh, we recommend to uh, follow um, some of the uh, options while traveling to Kazakhstan from uh, long distance flights. Uh, there is no any other options for him, uh, I mean, for the citizen of Argentina. PCR certificate can be expired during this long time uh, flight. Uh, if you travel uh, from Argentina, uh, usually uh, there is like a transit flight uh, to Kazakhstan. Uh, for example, uh, let's let's uh, see and modulate the situation when uh, this foreign uh, employee has a transit flight through uh, Frankfurt or through Germany uh, in general. So uh, he can apply for a new uh, PCR certificate at the transit point. So this will allow him to have uh, a valid certificate while traveling to Kazakhstan. In practice, uh, the flight from uh, from Germany, let's say, to Kazakhstan, um, will 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 not take less less will take less than one day. That's why uh, two days more uh, for the PCR certificate as validity, and uh, as an as a recommendation. You can obtain this special certificate at any transit point. It doesn't matter, like in Germany or in, in Amsterdam or any other country. So this uh, will allow a foreigner to enter Kazakhstan with uh, valid uh, PCR certificate for 72 uh, hours. If uh, the certificate was expired during the flight, then uh, deportation will apply for him, uh, and uh, he will be needed to return back to his home country. There's no other ways. Alia, would you like to comment something on this? If not, I will uh, continue my presentation. Uh, yes, no comments. Just to add that uh, uh, there are some medical hub, medical hubs or medical points in some airports, uh, and even some uh, some of them can issue the PCR certificate during even one or two hours, as far as yeah, mm -hmm, I know. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's uh, quite possible just to take some uh, gap here in uh, Germany, <laughs> uh, take this PCR test and afterwards travel to Kazakhstan. And as far as I know, all these points are located in the uh, airport area, not in the city, so maybe even in transit zone. So I think it's quite uh, important to know and check before yeah. if this airport has such uh, advantages. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct, correct. Uh, some of the international airports uh, and some countries implement uh, such kind of options for the uh, business travelers, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. for transit travelers, and they can pass this PCR uh, test while uh, being, uh, while having flight to uh, mm -hmm. uh, transit uh, countries. So no worries. So just uh, make sure you have enough time uh, 
to pass this PCR test. And if you are traveling, uh, let's say from from the countries uh, having a long time for the flight, so just keep in mind that this PCR certificate uh is valid uh, for no more than 72 hours if any updates on the validity uh, of uh, the pcr certificates we will uh, uh, keep everyone posted about those changes as well so we we already discussed about the immigration amnesty period which was uh, uh, uh which last started from uh, uh, 16 March till 1st November. Uh, it means that uh, during that period, uh, the documents, uh, the following documents were recognized as valid uh, uh, and there were no uh, any penalties, restrictions during you uh, to update those documents. First of all, uh, all types of uh, Kazakhstan visas, uh, residence permits, work permits, labor patents, uh, mostly for CIS countries, and temporary residence permits as well for CIS countries. It means that uh, uh, during that period, that during that migration amnesty period till 1st uh, November, if your visa was expired uh, during your stay in Kazakhstan, so let's, let's imagine if your visa was expired in June, so uh, the company could apply for uh, its extension, let's say even in August, in September, in October. Just keep in mind that you, you, you should apply for, let's say for work permit if necessary, or for any kind of document which confirms your stay in Kazakhstan. So this migration amnesty uh, was already expired. And uh, there was some misunderstanding uh, you know, from the different immigration consultants that this migration amnesty period uh, 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 will last till January 5th, 2021. So uh, I would like to confirm that uh, if you had your visa or residence permit expired during that period, no penalties for you. Uh, if your, let's say, uh, visa expires after 1st November, then uh, uh, you will decide whether to extend this visa or visa penalties or whether you can leave uh, the country without any penalties till 5th January 21. If one of the do following documents were expired uh, during your stay, let's say visa, residence permit, or even passport, so you're allowed to leave the country without any penalties. If you decide to extend your visa or to extend your permit, or let's say work permit or, or work permit, let's say residence permit or your visa free stay, let's say for Russian citizen. So uh, in this case, uh, if you decide to extend your validity of stay, uh, penalties will apply to you because the immigration amnesty period was expired on, on 1st of November, 2020. Uh, till that period, I mean, till 5th of January 2020, you are allowed to leave the, uh, the, the country if you, uh, first of all, don't want to extend your visa or extend your uh, visa-free stay and you don't have any plans to stay in Kazakhstan further, or if you don't have any direct uh, or regular flights to your home country, still you have don't have those flights. So till 5th of January, you have enough time to, uh, I mean, two, three additional weeks uh, to leave the country without any penalties. If still, let's imagine, and let's modulate the case, if you, uh, if there is no still, if still there is no any flight to your home country, you know, let, let's imagine like, like to Colombia, for example, uh, and uh, you stay, and exceed your stay, um, let's say after January fifth, and you travel back to your home country on in the end, um, in in the end of January, then you will be fined and the uh, penalties, uh, uh, and administration liability uh, will apply to you in this regard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, this is uh, the, uh, the administrative penalties, um, depending on the type uh, of uh, uh, penalty, there is some different amounts applied. 
and in case uh, a foreign uh, was uh, uh, stopped by the border service at the airport and uh, there is a fine and there is a penalty for him so the foreigner has the right to pay 50 percent of the uh, penalty amount within uh, 70 days it's like for uh, for the same administrative administrative violation for drivers mm -hmm. and uh, this is the last uh, uh, q a session we have drafted uh, most interesting and most sensitive questions so we we'll, along uh, along with alia we will discuss about the questions uh, mm -hmm. And uh, also review if we have. I don't. I'm not sure if you have enough time to review the uh, live questions. But if not, so uh, we uh, you can contact us uh, after the webinar session to uh, raise a question. So uh, in practice, uh, foreign citizens and uh, employees of the companies may have questions on the. Uh, order uh, for stay, exit, and entry of foreigners in Kazakhstan. So we, uh, in our daily practice, we consult uh, the foreign employees and their family members, and uh, also foreign chief executives and business visitors. So we provide uh, you know, support and online consultation on the immigration issues. You may have a look uh, about this service on our uh, website by clicking and following this QR code. And what questions do we uh, cover? And uh, first of all, uh, questions related to obtaining and renewing work permits in Kazakhstan, visa support, uh, migration uh, registration and uh, submission of notifications, order for entry and exit and stay of foreigners in Kazakhstan in general. So uh, this is uh, the uh, online consultation service, which uh, is focused, first of all, for on the foreign employees uh, staying or planning their trips in Kazakhstan. So uh, let's start uh, to uh, raise uh, the questions from the uh, attendees. So uh, mm -hmm. Alia, could you please? Yes, thank you. Uh, Anwar for your presentation. Uh, during two weeks, we received a lot of questions. So let's start uh, from uh, one of the uh, frequently, from the frequently asked uh, questions. So first is where we can find an official agreement publication link with the list of countries Kazakhstan opened borders with. In our presentation, we already uh, stated these countries, uh, and here is a link. You can uh, follow this link and see the current um, official information, which was published recently again, as I said, uh, mm -hmm. on a Facebook page of uh, Civil Aviation Committee. So just follow this uh, QR code and you will find all this information. And in case of any questions, of course, if you need additional clarification, they have direct um, uh, phone numbers. You can contact them and ask for additional information if required. Okay, mm -hmm. so next, next. question. Mm -hmm. uh, UK citizen, uh, can I cross Kazakhstan border if I need to fly to uh, Dubai due to my business trip? Of course, uh, you can. Uh, across Kazakhstan border, but you need to make sure that you have a multiple entry permission issued by IDC. So if uh, the host entity has already applied for such kind of multiple entry permission, no worries about the crossing the in numbers of, of crossing uh, the, uh, the Kazakhstan border. So if there is no any multiple entry permission issued by the IDC, so we need to apply for this. Mm -hmm. I think here uh, the question mm -hmm. raised because of this confusion with these countries, because we have direct flight with Dubai and uh, probably foreigners uh, think mm -hmm. that they can travel back to Kazakhstan with this direct flight. But unfortunately, it works only for that, uh, for citizens of those countries, 12 countries with whom Kazakhstan uh, resumed direct flights. But unfortunately, UK, UK is not uh, listed uh, in mm -hmm. these countries at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and also, it doesn't matter whether this uh, UK citizen have a work visa or residence permit in Kazakhstan. So if there is no multiple entry permission, 
So uh, mm -hmm. there will be uh, some limits in crossing uh, the, the Kazakhstan border. Mm -hmm. uh, if a foreigner plans to change residence address that is from Almaty to Nur Sultan for 20 days, does a host entity need to submit a notification letter to the migration service? Yes, um, host entity must imply notification about um, change of address uh, within three business days since, ch since uh, change of address. This is uh, mandatory, this is obligatory, uh, and uh, it was confirmed and stated on our, one of our last webinars with the migration uh, committee representative. And also it was confirmed that uh, even if you, it doesn't matter whether it is for one day, two day or 10 days, uh, host entity must submit Submit, uh, submit notification about uh, your current address uh, within three business days. So this is the uh, rules which is stated in current migration requirements. Yes, I would like to add that there were some updates uh, in the middle of this year. So um, uh, local HR would confirm that uh, Recently, uh, the, the, the recent practice was uh, about the submission of such notification was uh, if I foreign, let's say, travel uh, tra travels to other regions of Kazakhstan for more than five calendar days, then notification mm -hmm. letter uh, is required. So there is no uh, such kind of rule right now. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter, as I earlier confirmed, it doesn't matter whether one day or two days so notification letter mm -hmm. should be submitted by the host entity. Yes, whether uh, it is private purpose, yeah, whether it is business mm -hmm. or private purpose. Mm. If yes. it is private purpose and uh, you are working, for example, in um, Astana and going to another region for private purpose, uh, the host entity here must be uh, the hotel where you'll be staying or I don't know, apartment or individual, owner yes. or individual who is inviting mm -hmm. you and uh, you are staying in his flat or apartment within three business days. Mm -hmm. And also, it doesn't matter whether you change your address uh, from one city to another city or whether you change address mm -hmm. in, in one city. Let's say you are, you are staying in Astana or in Almaty. Mm -hmm. So and uh, if you are changing your address in Almaty from one flat to another, so the uh, inviting company should uh, follow this mandatory requirement for submission such notification. It can be done. I mean, uh, submission of notification can be done online. Mm -hmm. So through the uh, visa immigration portal. So next question. Uh, could you please explain the procedure to obtain a special permit from the IDC committee to enter Kazakhstan? As we described before, uh, we explained step-by-step -step procedure for getting such kind of uh, entry permission. So uh, we will have uh, records of our webinar and uh, you may follow and see the records of the webinar later on. So. Uh, and also, you may download the complete algorithm for the IDC permission procedure uh, on our website. Mm -hmm. okay, next, next question. Uh, we received the IDC protocol in 2020. Could we use that protocol in next year? Uh, yes, uh, you can use. Uh -huh. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Sorry. This protocol can be used in uh, 2020 one as well, um, since if you um, applied for uh, interdepartmental commission for multiple entries, and in terms of uh, multiple entry, for example, it can be a work visa or business visa for multiple entries. Since it is for multiple entries, it can be still, uh, still will be used in the next year. Mm -hmm. So you can use it. So there is no expiration by the end of this year. As I heard from some regions, there, is a, there was a requirement that uh, by the end of the year, the companies must update all these protocols. But uh, I cannot imagine how, how, what kind of work volume should be done in order to update all these protocols, which were received during 2020. That's why um, uh, the protocols that which was received in this year, you can use it in the next year if it was received for uh, multiple entries and in terms of yes. work permit or work visa, which is valid through uh, next year as well. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, just make sure that you uh, there is the information and the sentence about the uh, number of entries indicated in that protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, if uh, you're allowed for multiple entries, so it will be stated in that protocol too. Uh, how can Russian uh, citizens enter Kazakhstan? Or what are the obligatory documents? So, uh, as we said before, if uh, uh, Russian citizens traveling uh, to Kazakhstan by air, air flight, so no, uh, let's say, IDC permits uh, is required. So, if by land, so the host entity should apply for IDC permits uh, uh, for sure. Uh, regarding the other documents, so uh, of course, while passing the passport and border control, a foreigner needs to show his uh, valid passport. Uh, uh, if we are talking about Russian citizens, if let's say not Russian citizens, so valid visa or residence permit while passing the border control. I think we no have other documents. Yeah, yeah, continue. No, mm -hmm. no other documents required. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have quick questions. Uh, if you could return to the uh, previous page from um, our participants, if it was for single, in mm -hmm. terms of this IDC uh, permission, if it was for single, in this case, uh, inviting a host entity must reapply. I mean, apply once again for another uh, permission and we advise to request uh, this permission, this submit application for uh, multiple entries in order to make sure that you will not uh, require these protocols uh, every time when you plan to travel outside Kazakhstan. So it can be done, of course, in this case, your inviting party must reapply for this uh, protocol in order to get multiple entries uh, permission. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, uh, we received multiple uh, questions uh, from the, uh, our attendees. So, of course, definitely, uh, uh, if we don't answer uh, uh, during this uh, webinar session, we have uh, less time. So we'll, we will get back to you uh, with the answers to your questions, or you may contact us later on. So we will, uh, of course, uh, definitely let you know. Mm -hmm. uh, next question, uh, one of the frequently asked questions. Does the one to nine days rule apply to work with the holders? Yes, as we uh, stated in our presentation, in our in Anwar's presentation, uh, this rule applies only to resident permit holders, and their family members, and foreigners who are family members of Kazakhstan citizens. So it will not apply to work visa holders or business visa holders. Since you already have your work visa, you will just need this IDC uh, protocol to enter Kazakhstan. Uh, but in terms of this limitation, one to 90 days, uh, this rule will not apply to you since this limitation applies to resident permit holders and their family members and foreigners who are family members of Kazakhstan citizens. Mm -hmm. And this is listed in current um, rules of uh, border crossing. Uh, in, uh, we will leave the link to this official website of border control um, committee where you can see this limitation and to whom it applies to. And by, by family members, so we mean, uh, first of all, spouse and children. Mm -hmm. uh, dependent uh, who accompany you during your trip to Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you want to invite your, um, let's imagine your aunt or your nephew, so uh, no possibility for them to enter Kazakhstan as a family members, only spouse and uh, children. And in some cases, yeah, in some uh -huh. cases relative as far as I know. Uh, yes. relative but in this case you need to prove that relatives are uh, dependent on you uh, mm -hmm. financial maybe due to physical uh, limitations so that's why it needs to be uh, checked and confirmed uh, to the migration police mm -hmm. 
And also while applying for, let's say, for work visa for family members, uh, you need to, uh, to to provide supporting documents like uh, marriage certificate, certificate, uh, birth certificates for children as well. So uh, now that's why we are talking about the family members. We, have, uh, we mean uh, spouse and children only. The same for the foreigners who are the family members of KZ citizens, let's say, if, uh, a, let's say, a U.S. Uh, citizen uh, is married to Kazakhstan citizen, so uh, there should be a, a marriage certificate, which will confirm his connection to, uh, relative connection to the members, family members in Kazakhstan. So the next question, uh, UK citizen with a valid work visa, a C3 work visa, now wishes to travel to London for annual leave. Uh, do he or she needs to be out for Kazakhstan for 90 days? And do she or need to apply for a permit from the IDC? I mean, no, no IDC uh, is, will be required, of course, for uh, multiple entry permission. Uh, but uh, one and 90 days rule will not apply to work visa holders as we said before. So only for residents, uh, holders and their family members. So if you need to travel, uh, to travel uh, outside Kazakhstan for some time and then return back to Kazakhstan after holidays, it doesn't matter or after your annual leave. So we need to be aware about the multiple entry permission uh, which should be uh, obtained by the host entity. So please ask your employer or your inviting company whether this uh, company has uh, applied for multiple entry permission for you. If not, uh, you can travel uh, to your home country for annual leave and then ask your employer or inviting company to apply for multiple entry during that period of time when you are outside Kazakhstan. Next question. Uh, when US citizens will go back to visa-free regime? As we said, a visa waiver program uh, will be resumed after uh, 1st May next year. And we hope that it will happen. And uh, all these uh, 57 citizens of the 57 countries will be able to travel to Kazakhstan on a visa waiver program as, as was possible before. So we expect that it will be resumed after uh, 1st May of the next year. Mm -hmm. And the last question uh, we prepared, uh, uh, foreign employee uh, has a residence permit, one and 90 days rule apply for him. Can we obtain an entry permission from the IDC? Yes, sure, you can obtain uh, a, the uh, IDC permission uh, is granted on, not only to uh, work or business visa holders, but also for residence permit as well, and also for uh, those who are traveling to Kazakhstan uh, without any visas, like uh, Belarus or like uh, Russian citizens as well. So, Alia, whether we have enough time to uh, catch up some questions from the <laughs> airports? We, uh, yeah, we already exceeded uh -huh. the time, but I think we have, we can have, yeah, five more time, five, five uh, more minutes just to cover some questions uh, on our, uh, mm -hmm. chat. Yes. I see the open questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. The yeah. first, uh, let me check and let me read. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, uh, I have a C3 valid visa. If I fly tomorrow to Spain and come back in 10 days, do I need IDC permission? Yes, you will be required. Uh, no, otherwise, please check whether your uh, current uh, employer uh, applied for multiple entry IDC permission. If not, so you need to ask the employer and the company to apply for such kind of permission. Mm -hmm. If you can read and what, because I can see this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I will continue. Let me check. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, please confirm citizen. I'm British citizen with uh, UIA residence visa. Uh, am I exempt from 90 day rule? And I'm husband of Kazakhstan wife for nine years. Uh, 
having a residence permit in other country doesn't allow you to enter uh, or Kazakhstan uh, with uh, this residence uh, visa or residence permit. So we, you don't need to follow this 90 day rule uh, if you have a residence visa in UAE. But if, if you are a husband of Kazakhstan wife for nine years, so this rule will apply to you. So please ask your uh, employer uh, whether uh, they applied for multiple entry uh, commission from IDC. If not, so you need to follow this uh, 90 day rule. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh -huh. yes, yes, next question. Yes, I see. Now I see. Mm -hmm. Uh, next question. When the foreign, foreign citizens are entering to Kazakhstan by air or by land, what kind of permission they need to have and what the form of the special permissions are available for uh, Kazakh border service officers? Clarify, please, all list of documents they should have on their hand. Uh, mm -hmm. So when the foreign citizens are entering Kazakhstan, air by land, what kind of permission? Uh, as we said, this is IDC permission, interdepartmental commission, uh, which should be um, obtained. Uh, this permission should be obtained by host entity inviting uh, company and submit uh, submitted to the um, uh, appropriate Akimat where the company registered or uh, to ministry uh, by your company's business activity type. So, mm -hmm. so once it is submitted uh, to the state authority, uh, it will be required approximately three or four weeks to get approval. And in case of uh, uh, succeed, uh, you will be issued um, extract from this protocol with uh, permission, with statement that uh, these uh, foreign nationals will be permitted to enter Kazakhstan. So on the basis of this document, this protocol, uh, foreign nationals will be able to enter Kazakhstan. So there is no difference between air or by land permission. Mm -hmm. There is mm -hmm. one type of one type of permission issued uh, by interdepartmental commission. And what kind of document do they have to have on their hand? So the copy of this protocol would be sufficient, uh, among with a PCR test, of course, which was mm -hmm. issued not, um, uh, not um, so which is valid for 72 hours. How the mechanism of notification verification is works for Kazakhstan border service. Um, if you mean by notification and notification upon arrival, mm -hmm. uh, yes, there is a system. Uh, it names the name is uh, uh, it named Berkut, uh, in which um, the Ministry of um, Internal Affairs, uh, it is Migration Office, Migration Police, and the Border Control see all these um, notifications submitted by host entities uh, upon arrival, upon change of address, upon um, changing the uh, uh, upon travels to another regions so of course it is checked uh, on this system by border search and uh, migration police mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. i think it's covered mm -hmm. yes next i question. think that uh, yes uh, let's let's uh, uh, consider the next question i have a pin card and i don't uh, plan to leave before may if I have to leave for emergency, how do I come back to Kazakhstan before the 90 days? So uh, you need to check whether the company, your company can apply for multiple entry permission. If not, then you need to follow 90 days rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Alia, yes, the last question and we should complete yes, our webinar. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think most of questions about uh, procedure of getting this permission and uh, we will uh, leave the link to download um, algorithm which was approved uh, by our government and uh, you will see all these uh, step-by-step uh, procedures how to get this permission because I see a lot of questions related to, to, to this uh, permission of entry, how to get it, what is mm -hmm. the mechanism. Uh, to whom they should submit this uh, MVK, MVK protocol, etc. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it looks like we've covered all of our questions. Let me have a look to our uh, Zoom. 
Yes, I would like to say that if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. So here are the contact details of Alia and mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have, uh, please feel free uh, if uh, any questions and uh, still you need some clarifications on further mm -hmm. stay or any clarifications on your type of visa or residence permit, feel free to contact us. So we'll be mm -hmm. happy to answer and provide more detailed information mm -hmm. over the phone. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you for being with us, for joining us today, and thank you for participation. Thank you for uh, active uh, participation, for your questions. If there were a lot of um, interesting questions, so thanks a lot, and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone, and uh, enjoy your weekend. Bye. Bye.